again and welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hey guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> we saw each other less than 12 hours I ago. Know, I, I feel like so, it's between the holiday weekend and then like so you're off by a day and like then we had a fundraiser I, last I, night. I was off by a week. Because you were away. Because I went to see my parents in yeah. South Carolina. Highly recommend yeah. the door-to-door, -door, Avilo, super cheap, Yeah, I was going to ask easy. you how the flight with them was. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, you, you gotta, the it's flight's gotta, full. And you got to be going to where they go. And and you got to be going to where they go. But I live in Manchester. Right. And my parents live in Greenville. Right. So, so it's perfect. super convenient, super cheap, yeah. was fine. I mean, it literally was $62 return flight for each me and Louie. Yeah. And, um, you know, we just took a backpack. We didn't even in take pay the extra 40 bucks for carry-on. Yeah. You know, we just kind of wore sweats. And yeah. it was great. I, yeah, I mean, in the, especially in the summertime, if you think about it, I mean, how many clowns, much, if, you know, even if you packed a bathing suit and two pairs of shorts and three T-shirts, it's still a backpack. Honestly, yeah. I mean, maybe I, in the winter it would be a little less, but. Right, maybe then you take a big coat. But, um, you know, new people on the flight ran into Drew Klein and his oh, wife funny. and son. Uh, they So this airline does Manchester to Spartanburg, yep. Greenville, and Raleigh, Durham. Yes. So those are the ones. Yep. But I was going to look for the other ones. There are a couple of other cheap. Airlines yeah, coming out um, at MHT now. I was looking at one and I can never remember the names, but there I was looking at a different one, and um, it goes. I want to say it goes direct to Orlando. Okay, so that's so I was like, okay, nice and then too. it went direct. I think to Fort Myers. You know, like okay. so I was like, okay, that's interesting. I, you know, whether or not it's cheaper is, you know, it all depends. Right, and, and, and it depends on what day. Like not all of them fly every day. I mean, honestly, I didn't really realize it was Memorial Day weekend when yeah. I booked it. I just yeah. I thought the weekend was the next weekend because it's the Monday and that was the thirty first and whatever. Anyway, got back from uh, North Carolina, South Carolina. And for some reason, I thought, like, the filing is open today. No, wait, no. I was like, I was literally an entire week too early. Ah. And I was, like, calling yeah, all no, my donors, no, no, no. trying to figure out what I'm going to do, no, you know. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I have another filing, week. <laughs> filing for state office starts next Wednesday, Wednesday. the 5th of June. Oh, my hair, um, sorry, And guys. it is, um, they go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next week, and then the following full week. So there's... Eight business days. Clearly, my hairdresser also went on vacation. Um, so whatever, we're so just rocking the eighties. Uh, we here. know that Victoria <laughs> Sullivan's filing to run for Senate against Donna Susi. Um, What's that district number? Oh, okay. I don't so, know. Eighteen. I'm going to go okay. with eighteen. Yep, I think mine. And I think 20. Keith Murphy's is sixteen because yep. I always think the numbers make no sense. So Keith Murphy will be running. <coughs> excuse me for re-election. That's also Ward 1 in Manchester, so he has a little bit of Manchester. And then you guys have to decide what you're doing in 20, whether or not you're getting in. You know, I mean, <coughs> Sorry. I, I, me. I, I have some opinions. Uh, I there have opinions, will, but... There will be some uh, conversations that mm. need to be had, but, uh, you know, who knows? Yep. I'm gonna, I, um, I'm gonna it'll be interesting see. to see who actually files for things, because I know, like, so... For the executive council district to take to fill uh, the seat that Ted Gatzis is retiring from, you've got uh, former vice chair of the state party uh, Ryan Terrell is running. Um, John Stephen is running. Supposedly Ross Terrio is running. I can't even remember Teresa's last name is running. Grinnell. That no. One? no. Yeah, but her name's something with a B. Uh, okay. Yeah, but that person. Um, I. My gut tells me Ross might not run. And I'm hoping that, to be honest, I'm kind of hoping that Ryan doesn't either. As I hate having to try to pick, you know, right, like, right. and I really like Ryan, but I really think John Stephen would be the best person to guarantee that that, so that slot <coughs> doesn't go to a Democrat. So you have those people that'll file. So it's also very interesting to just sort of see how things shook out. Did you follow the Libertarian Convention at uh, all? Because I, I think watched, this will impact what is going I, to happen um, in New I Hampshire. I watched Trump's, a uh, replay of Trump's speech. <laughs> so uh, for folks back home, the Libertarian 
Party just had their national convention in D.C. over the weekend, and they had very cleverly invited both Trump to speak, RFK spoke on the Friday, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy was there. You know, there were all these conversations, and then, of course, they had to pick their own candidate. Yeah. And uh, for the you know for for the folks back home, basically what happened is there are two factions now within the Libertarian Party. It's kind of split left and right as well, which I think is kind of an artificial split and uh, really doesn't serve anyone. But I think what happened after they elected uh, Chase Oliver, I believe is his name, which I would say is a candidate who was sort of more on the left side of mm -hmm. things. But they had to do eight or nine, I believe, votes, right, to, to get to the candidate. So it was close, close, close. And it was between the left wing, Oliver, and the right wing, Rechtenwald sort of thing. And, uh, and uh, Chase Oliver took it. And now everyone's like, ooh, what's going to happen? And I'm like, what's going to happen is the people on the right side are probably all going to vote for Trump. Right. Um, well, I'm, Which is actually good right. for the Republican well, Party. Was, so you know what? Yo, welcome. It's, it was interesting to listen to Trump because, you know, you got to give these people credit. Like, people like to knock everybody and they make it sound like it's all easy. You know, to go and speak in front of a group of people that aren't necessarily going to be welcoming to you. They booed him. Not, well, that's what they were <laughs> booing things that I was like, what are you doing? Like, at one point, Trump says, look, I'll put a libertarian in, in my cabinet. cabinet. I will put libertarians in, and it lists off a bunch of things, and they're booing him, and I'm like, you know, this is your best shot. And he did have some sarcasm in the, you know, he, he He said, you know, he when goes, they started booing him. He goes, you know, you can, he goes, I think you should make me the nominee. I think you should pick me to be your nominee. And, um, because you want, you should want to win, and I'd like to see you have, be a winner. Okay. He goes, and then they started booing him. He goes, or just stick with your 3% again. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hats off to him, and Tammy, to your point, um, it is not easy to get up in front no. of people who dislike you. Ask me how I know. <laughs> but uh, I always think of Shanet O'Connor, right? Okay. The singer, uh, she was the lady who back in the probably 80s, the eight, it might have been the early 90s, mm -hmm. tore up the, yeah. it was in the 80s, tore up the picture of the Pope. Yeah. Way back, right? Sort of like a punk rocker oh, yeah. kind of. But I watched a documentary about her the other day, and she, it was the Bob Geldof mm. concert or something, and it's in this massive stadium. So let's say it's like 80,000 people, yeah. right? Let's, so let's say there's 60,000 for the sake of argument. And because she had just done this very controversial thing, she walks out on stage only to sing one song yeah. because everyone's kind of taking turns right. for some fundraiser or something. And she walks out, and that stadium starts booing her. And I thought to myself, I like to picture myself in situations yeah. so that I know how I'm going to deal with it before it, I'm confronted yeah. with it. That's just how my mind works. And I was like, God, imagine. And you have to like, sing. What would that feel you like? You sing. stand there, and like 60,000, yep. let's say half of them. 30,000 people are booing yeah. you, right? Like what that energy and onslaught must feel like. I don't think Trump was having that no. suffering. No, I mean, and it wasn't 60,000 people, you no. know. Um, I mean, Dave Smith had, had pre, you know, primed. Prepped. Well, I hear a lot of good points too, because he was like, look, there, there's people in this room from two factions. You've got Trump supporters here and you've got the libertarians here. You know, like you have these- And some of them are both. Right, but I'm just saying, like you have two different, groups of people in the same space. Right. So let's just be good, kind, you know, let's be good to each other. And he goes, and for the libertarians, he goes, I just want to remind you, this is a former president of the United States and the leading candidate to be the, you know, a front runner in the current presidential election. Like, and he chose to come talk to you. So maybe be nice. I and mean, like, you and know. It, it, it is true. Like, you have to remember the the reality of who sometimes people are even if you don't agree with somebody you know like well and to dave's point was kind of like look we aren't the groups of people who actually shout people down like i right. want to hear different people's right. opinions and thoughts i mean i was i was actually really surprised that rfk who i believe spoke on the friday i didn't watch all of it because i was doing high tea with my mommy but um you know, I, I guess he actually did ask for the LP nomination, and he only got like two or three well, percent, right? And I did. So I did hear um, 
because, it, it, you know, there's a lot of work. But, um, Trump did say, he didn't say he would pardon. He said he would commute the sentence of yes. Ross Ulbricht. So Ross Ulbricht, who was the alleged founder of Silk Road, which, of course, was a uh, website on the dark web that sort of proved the proof of concept for Bitcoin mm -hmm. and for crypto. It was the first place where you could actually use uh, digital money in a way. Uh, a lot of what happened on the website was drug sales. I mean, right. everyone knows that. Uh, but really, Ross's whole philosophy was how do we use uh, libertarian principles, property rights, to reduce the harm of the drug war by one, allowing products to be tested so that people aren't overdosing, mm -hmm. say, on like crappy fentanyl or too strong whatever, right? So you could have peer reviews and sort of like a Yelp review yeah. website for drugs, right? right? Also eliminating people kind of going to a drug dealer and being like, hey, I just want some weed. And the guy's like, you know what you should try is <laughs> some fentanyl pills, you know? And so the goal with Silk Road was actually harm reduction in the war on yep. drugs. So there was a noble cause there. He got caught up in just, you know, the federal government's uh, war against drugs, the federal government's war against crypto, the federal government's well, and, war on war. I and don't know. He like didn't they just physically cause any direct harm to anybody. He wasn't selling drugs to somebody no, else. He, he built wasn't doing a that. website. He built technology that allowed, that allowed others. So, if you want Ross Ulbricht in jail for and, life, I would like right. the eBay, yeah. Etsy, well, Amazon, all of them, all of those websites do illegal things well, and you as look well. At, you know, just in Ross's case, he's been in prison for how many years now? Eleven. Eleven years. I mean, I think that's more than sufficient. I mean, he was that twenty-six is way more when than he went sufficient, in. and nobody will pardon him, and it's so frustrating. So, but also he got over sentenced because he got a double life sentence yeah. without the chance of parole, which the UN actually says is cruel and yeah. unusual punishment because that is not, and there is no, um, there is no uh, proportionality right, here. Too, like he right. was over sentenced yes. because he's a political prisoner. Right. So Donald Trump did not pardon him no, we, in his first term. Supposedly and Mike Pompeo tried, told him not to or something. We tried really hard. I'm, I'm uh, in contact with Ross's mother. I have worked with him mm. on this issue. I was probably one of the first people who gave Lynn a platform to come talk about yep. these issues and Ross's incarceration. So we did, you know, there was an appeal that wasn't uh, to the Supreme Court. They said, no, we're not going to hear this appeal. So really the last chance Ross has to not die in prison. Get pardoned or have a sentence commuted. It's commuted. So it is a big deal yeah. that Trump is on the record. And honestly, I think he would do it this well, time I really because did. I feel like he would be so ashamed. Well, and I also think that people have his ear. You know, like you always, everybody... Everybody is always learning. Like even the you know even the president of the United States, everybody is always learning a little bit more if they're willing to learn. So you know, I mean, you've got Rand Paul's got his ear, Vivek's got his ear, Tulsi's got lots of people have his ear. So you, there's you know, yeah, there's people with differing views perhaps than the uh, the people he may have been surrounded by in the past. Right. So I could see it being sort of like, nice. uh, I could see the, I mean, I don't think the LP is going to do well this time <laughs> at all. No. Um, but, you know, I could see the, 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 the right side of the, fa right side of the faction uh, leaning towards Trump yeah. and possibly the left side leaning towards RFK. Yeah. Because, of course, if you don't want Biden... There is a role that RFK can play in this election if he gets ballot access well, he gets because he will primarily draw votes from Biden. So if we swing the 3% that went right. to the LP to Trump, which seems more likely than it was a week ago, yeah. And and let's say uh, RFK. I pulls, mean, a big number would be one, ten, right? And even but, if it's like, one or two percent, it doesn't matter. If it's one or two percent, it's, it's enough, enough right? right? Ross Perot back then, when we had a legitimate third party yeah. candidate, pulled about fifteen percent, if yeah. I remember correctly. Um, I don't know that 
RFK is pulling at no, that but level, it, but, but he could. We you, have six it, when months you look, left. The margin of error is so small that you know the, the fluctuation between Trump and Biden is so small. I mean, I don't even honestly. I are, I don't know that they're going to run Biden. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. It's How getting you, close. I I saw a Venn diagram today that made me laugh out loud. I reshared it on my ex account. Um, and it's basically like it's a Venn diagram with Biden where they're asking how on the one hand can you have the cognitive facilities to run the country as president of America, but also not have the cognitive <laughs> facilities to stand trial in all these right. uh, cases, right? Like they actually, there was a decision that came out that just said, uh, no. oh, you know, he, he can't really make these decisions or something. Like, and I was like, ah, <laughs> how's this dude president? It is weird, right? All right, so local news. Yeah. Did you see this uh, decision that yeah, came out? So I, I, I printed it. I saw that that's what you brought to. So um, the headline, federal I judge. I printed the whole case. Yes. Yeah, the federal <laughs> judge struck down the state's law banning the teaching of discrimination in public schools, concluding it was unconstitutionally vague and denied educators the right to due process. So without even knowing all the details, I'm going to read that as this um, district court, U.S. district court, so this is a federal court. This yep. is not a state court. Right. So I was kind of like, why is the federal court because hearing I... a case from a bunch of New Hampshire unions on a New Hampshire law right. that only applies in New Hampshire? I was right. a little confused about it, well, the standing That is a little there. unusual. And it says, um, uh, that is interesting. Um, right? I was like, why is this in a federal district court? And, I couldn't but quite I mean, what, it. The fact that it says it's unconstitutionally vague and denied the educators... So without knowing what the law says, I'm going to say that the due pro the the process for teachers to um, exonerate themselves must not be clearly defined in the law. So say you're a teacher and a parent accuses you of teaching discrimination, whatever discrimination, doesn't matter what. And I mean, the law, if, the, if we're going to have a law that says you can't do that, there has to be a process for the teacher to say, but I'm not teaching, especially if the penalty is on the teacher, which that's another part. You would right. presume that the teacher is either losing their job or fined or something. You have to be fair. Whether you like teachers, dislike teachers, it's irrelevant. You have to have some sort of due process for that. But, you know, and, and to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of this bill. I feel like it was a... Uh, 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 problem in search of a solution in search of a solution in search of a problem like it was just the the goal of the bill right was to try and sort of stop this uh critical race theory mm -hmm. which is a theory it is a marxist theory yeah. that does teach racism right. against white people right. i mean that is the bottom line like whether we want to say it or not yeah. that is basically it right yeah. it says that uh it, it, it teaches racism against white people. So this wasn't a response to that, but I think it wasn't the right solution. Right, that's what I'm saying. There's probably, there's gotta be, it, the word, and this happens, this is not uncommon. You know, people write, especially when it's a touchy situation, you write paragraphs of language thinking it's rectifying the problem that you're rectifying, nice. but instead you've opened up this little can of words, or you forgot to tie up that loose end, or you forgot about this. I mean, and we see that all the time, and that's why sometimes um, I, I, bills I, have, I, laws have to stay. Like, you pass a bill one year, I mean, look at the bail reform. You know, like they thought that was a better answer, but it oh, created a second group oh, of problems. Oh, I mean, it's almost like job security, right? Like for the 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 the, the uh, conquered critters, because it's you know, I I understand people are like, oh, let's do something, let's do something, but primarily when we do things, it's just worse. I mean, we have a terrible right to know bill now. Right, we have right. a terrible. Like, even this, I knew when it came out, I was like, this is not going to have the legs. It's not going to solve the problem. And it didn't. So, uh, you know, now this sort of gives, um, uh, I think I saw the post from the ACLU, actually, of yeah. New Hampshire. So Gilles and, and people I've worked with in the past, and of course they're crowing because they're like, the unions, you know, we and won, I don't know we that won. they, I wouldn't say that because all it's going to do is that when legislation comes, legislature reconvenes, They'll just tweak the law to meet the... Well, I'm not even so, sure they so can I do did, that. I did see a post. It was shared. This is something that was on New Hampshire Journal and somebody I know shared it. And it says, under the law tossed out by Judge Barbaro, Barbadoro, 
These are the bullet points. You can't teach, advocate, instruct, or train people that one group is inherently superior or inferior to another. And I have heard people say that their kids are being taught that or that opinions being shared with their children. You can't teach that people are inherently racist, sexist, etc., based on the group they're in. Again, that happens. You can't teach that people should be discriminated against based on their group, which is, I don't, okay. And you can't teach people not to even try to treat people in other groups equally. So the race shouldn't matter, colorblind approach. Um, so it is just, it's a weird, it definitely is a weird decision. I mean, there, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think this is a slam dunk uh, win. You know, and honestly, maybe the anybody. solution here, which you know is certainly the approach that has been taken by sort of the pro-liberty people uh, in the state of New Hampshire, is if these are the things you're concerned about in your public schools, then withdraw your children, put them in, uh, to use the EFAs, use the but, education but, freedom accounts, and find an alternative. I, while I would agree with that, there is a group of people stuck between the eligible for EFAs and afford and being able to afford private because they don't get a break on their well, taxes. But you see, that is actually, I mean, I think that's where the work needs to be done. I know that the the Senate killed this, right? But we tried to increase the, yeah, to the poverty rate yeah. from 350 to 500 yeah. percent. The Senate was like, nah, we're not going to up it. But I think if we get the right people in the Senate mm -hmm. and if we get, you know, the right thinkers yeah. working on the issues, uh, maybe the tweaking with the language doesn't happen on a bill like no, this. I, I, the tweaking with the language happens in other places because we'd be better served at this stage to just be like, withdraw your children from the systems I mean, that it are is working. Really, it is really, I can't imagine. I mean, I just cannot imagine in today's world keeping my kids in, especially, I mean, we're in New Hampshire. Can you imagine what it must be like in some of these other states? You know, where, where the where there aren't legislators keeping an eye on things and stuff like I can't well, even imagine what it's like in New York. I mean, I think it's it's I think it's bad. I mean, we we know that children are not thriving. Right, right. You know, no one's coming out of American public schools feeling well balanced and optimistic about the future. I'm reading a book right now about. Um, uh, sort of uh, the deregulation of people's brains mm -hmm. as a result of fear mm -hmm. and stress and anxiety mm -hmm. and all these things. And it's the first time where we've had generations of children who don't play no, anymore. They like don't play even know how to play, I don't think. Is, is like a core element you learn of... Your whole, you basically learn all of your, almost all of your life skills from playing as a child, in my opinion. Yeah, and really, and, I mean, we could just replace I mean, schools with and then like, you know, and then you become a teenager and you learn how to create board, like your reasonable even, barriers. Even with play, even uh, sports or any right, of those things, is constant conflict. Uh, negotiation, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you're learning, oh, these are the rules. Oh, I broke the rules. Oh, you broke the rules, but then I kicked or you I'm and now trying, we fought. Or, or I'm or not now, trying hard enough. All of God those forbid things. your child grows up thinking I should try harder, and um, and so you know I just think that we need to do a giant uh, reset, reboot, re whatever you want to call it. Let's reimagine yep. stuff. But honestly, whatever but that, track we're on now the, um, is but not But I mean, great. And on the flip side of it, you got the Democrats who are just so anti school choice. They do not want children to have any kind of opportunity other than the public school run by the teachers unions. And that is understand? so sad. But it's 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 not just sad, it's actually binary, right? Like it's 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 part of this thought control thing where people go, there is this one way. But it's like there isn't. There right, are, right. There, you know, we can't even agree on what is history or what right. we should be teaching right. people. So, you know, and it's funny to me because everything I'm seeing in the States is my upbringing. It right. is literally South Africa all right. over again where you're just like, what? You know, like Louis and I went to, I went to an English school and he went to an Afrikaans school. So he went to a Boer school and I went to a British school. And our understanding of the Anglo-Boer War 
was so, so different right. that I, I have such a distinct memory of us when we were dating. We would have these debates and these conversations. And, like, not... and I'd be like, no, that's not what happened. And he's like, no, you don't understand. Read this, read this. And I'd be like, well, read this. And we'd be like, it's Wait, the same know. war and we don't agree, yeah. right? It's In the like, same in the same place. Right. So, I mean, it's the same with the war of northern aggression, yeah. right? Like, people in the south are like, you know, the war isn't what it was about, yeah. you know? And so, I think we have to understand that the world is complex, and you cannot reduce it down to the the, the way we're trying to do. Um, I did want to mention a couple quick bills. Um, one, I'm not going to remember the number of, but these are bills that have passed both the House and the Senate are now on their way to the governor's desk to see whether or not he will sign them or not. Uh, the first one is a bill that um, our good friend Kristen Noble, from state rep from Bedford, put in that would prohibit um, masking of children in public schools. By, if you want to mask, you, you, you can. can. But I, it basically is not saying they can never mask children. It, can, it says that your school board and your principals can't make this decision. So it would have to be a health, an actual health emergency declared by some other government. They so that's squandered a, it. Right. No one trusts. Right. So no that, one trusts any of the health officials so anymore. So that shouldn't. bill is on its way to the governor. We'll see awesome. how that goes. And the other one, and there was an op-ed in I think today's paper, um, Senate or House Bill 396, which is about um, this important legislation amends New Hampshire's Human Rights Act to permit but not require public and private institutions to make classifications based on biological sex and in three narrowly tailored and specifically defined circumstances. One, in the usage of lavatories and locker rooms designed to accommodate multiple persons. So okay. girls go in girls' rooms, boys go in boys' room. Two, in athletic events in a sport or activity in which physical strength, speed, or endurance is generally recognized to give an advantage to males. So girls in girls' sports, boys in boys' sports. In the operation of prisons or other institutions to which persons may be committed involuntary. So if you identify as a woman, you, but you're still a boy, you can't go to the woman's prison. Because it's not fair to the women in the women's prison to have to be incarcerated with a male. So that, okay. that is pretty basic, not crazy. And I was glad to see that that came out and passed. Um, We'll see what the what I mean, the it'll be does. interesting. I mean, Chris doesn't really have anything to lose by and signing a, things because there's he's a not legalization bill going his Yo, going. Oh well, actually, I guess that's going back to the House for another vote. That's going back to the House for another vote. The EFA bill will go I back mean, to the House I'm for another sorry, vote. I mean, I'm sorry, but they've basically uh, they if if they could have crapped it up, they did, and they did, and it's a terrible bill, I think. So. Those that's what's happening up in Concord, <laughs> um, and I believe the House is in. The, the, set, the Senate probably is in session today. I don't really know that. Uh, the House is in session tomorrow, Thursday. Um, we'll see where what else pans out because now the com now it's the, close the to the finish, yeah. guys. And um, you know, by next week we'll probably know who's running for what yeah, or possibly we'll have a good not. Feel. Some um, of us we'll might fill, wait to we'll the fill last in. minute. Um, I guess when we tape next Wednesday, we really won't have any information. But the following week, we'll have pretty much the summary of who's running. Um, that's all we have for this week. Enjoy this wonderful weather. It's beautiful. It's going to be like high 70s, 80s. It's like, that's perfect. Um, and then we will be back next week. Bye, guys. Bye.